How's it going everybody? So today we're doing brakes on the E39. As you heard me talk about in past videos, my 2001 BMW 530i. Look at all the little spiders on this thing. What the hell's going on? Anyway, 2001 BMW 530i, which is E39. The front brake has been sitting for a while. The front brake is sticking. And I thought I could hear it's sticking a little bit or felt it when we pushed it in here when I was doing the engine. And then the other day I parked out front and uh, when I put it in park, and it rolled forward a little bit, it sounded like the brake was on. So uh, when I was doing the fog lights, I jacked it up and lo and behold, the front driver's side brake uh, caliper is sticking. So we have a new, to me, brake caliper. Got this one from California off eBay. It's like 30 bucks, free shipping. We know California has no rust and we know the only reason why these calipers usually go bad is because of rust. And it looks good, man. It looks real good. The caliper itself is not like nasty looking. Everything looks fine around the seal where it goes in. It should do fine. So we're gonna go and change this out. We might go ahead and try our new brake bleeder out on this. Um, this one actually screws on the cap of the master cylinder. And I believe it pushes fluid down through it. I'll do a little looking on it before we could use that. We're gonna go and pull the wheel right now. We're gonna switch this caliper out. All right, so I found a few things here. That's wrong with the old brakes. For one thing, somebody had this caliper off at some point. This thing's like all twisted up the hose. Look at that. So when I take it off, I need to make sure and twist it so it's not twisted up and all bound up and it's pressing against the, the spindle there. The next thing is the brake pad sensor were just kind of sitting in there. It looks new, maybe. It'll probably be uh, advised just to go ahead and bypass this bad boy. You can see if you look down in there at the wires, if you can see it or not, the wires are a little bit frayed, like touching together. So how you bypass these, basically you just twist the wires together. So we'll snip it somewhere here and uh, twist the wires together and we'll solder them together and get it out of the way. But nonetheless, for this very second, um, we're missing a plastic piece right there too. Or if that's in the car. I need to find that because that's going to throw water from the tire right on our LED light. Huh. Anyhow. Um, so we're going to pull this off. Now you could either pull the whole thing off. I think these are 18s right here. Or you could just pull a little, the little Allen bolts out that takes the caliper only off. I'm not sure. We're also going to pull our spring off here. We'll see the screwdriver. And just kind of pop it out of the way it shouldn't be too big of a deal at all and at that point in time once we take the spring off our two bolts out we can get this thing pulled back and uh we take the hose disconnect the hose and this thing's totally off we have a little drain pan down underneath here so catch any fluid that runs out so yeah we'll see how she goes all right so we just took it off like i said it was only these two hex bolts I don't know what size that was, but you can see here, we flip it up on the end. And I'll have to take these out. The new one did not come with them, so I'll pull them out. We're gonna, you're supposed to put grease in these. These are slider bolts. We'll re-grease those, put some lithium grease on them, put it back in, and do it like that. But you can see on this one, on the back side, maybe, it's kind of a tough spot. You can see right here on the lip of that piston, how rusty it is. And that's what's keeping it from moving correctly. I think it was moving just not correctly. And then we just took it off real quick and then quickly just screwed the line back on this caliper. So we shouldn't have lost too much fluid. Now this caliper is empty, so we have to factor that in. Uh, as far as the brake pads that were on, they're pretty much new. But I don't know if they were the old dusty old dusty ones or what the situation was. A-G-A-P-E-E, -E. agape, yeah, I don't know. Uh, remember, it starts me right, these were dusting the old wheels pretty badly. So 
we have some brand new ceramics here. Let's get them open. And you guys heard me talk about these before, these Prime Choice pads. These are my favorite pads, my favorite back parts. They're very cost effective. They did go up a little bit on these pads for full ceramics. They, I used to buy them for $17, and now they're like $27 uh, on Amazon. This is not a sponsored video, but these are made in Canada and shipped directly from Canada, as you can see there. And I these are on all the cars here on the Sequoia. Never had an issue with them. And I think they had them out to me in about, what was it, three days. On the third day, they showed up. And here's these. Boy, they stink, too. They always stink like hell. And these will not dust your wheels out. These are, are full ceramic. And they're very good pads. So we're going to go ahead and put those on here. And um, we'll go ahead and take the other side off and look at it. Hopefully the other side, the piston, is not rusty like this one. If it is, then we have a decision to make. Uh, another 30 bucks for another caliper well I might be in the might be in the cards and I just remember now I also need to order a new set of sway bar links for this from uh, Febby Bilstein and of course phone's ringing again okay so before we go any further here I need to grease these pens and I just thought to myself I need to do a product review on this real quick I don't have any other grease here that'll work for this. Well, really. So we're gonna use this. This company is Deoxit. Now you remember from a long, probably a year ago, they sent me a can of this stuff. They sent me a can of spray lithium grease and they got a hold of me the other day and they sent me all this stuff. We have lithium grease in a squeeze tube. We have, this stuff is like a contact cleaner that removes oxidation. So it's a cleaner and it has lithium grease in it for electronics. We have a smaller aerosol can of the DN5, and I'm not really sure what the difference on this is. Non-flammable, maybe it's flammable and non-flammable. Probably one of the differences, but anyhow. Uh, then they sent us a, a can of this for battery terminals. And I tell you what, the last stuff I bought of this, that was the best stuff I ever used. It worked so good for BMW uh, like blinker bulb sockets stuff like that super good for even like door hinges on cars you spray your hinges with this it doesn't stink and that's really good so these are the two pins we're going to reuse we'll probably get a little piece of brillo clean them up a little bit and we'll put some of this lithium grease here on it this l260d i'll put a link below for this stuff there's going to be three links i'll put it in the very first comment of this video there'll be a link for deoxit they have an actual website there'll be a link for the prime choice brake pads if i don't put that in there everybody's going to ask and of course like always there'll be a link for my website which is nathansbmwworkshop.com if you guys are having issues at all with your car i set a site up you go to and like i said i'll put a link below there is a bmw forum on there a lot of people's posting i have not fully advertised it yet uh, but I will do that very shortly. I have not put the Google keywords on the website. I will do that shortly. Uh, there's still a lot of people on there. We're getting about 2,000 people a day going through that site. There's a lot of help on there. There's also Amazon links, including all my YouTube videos are also on there, playlists. So you can see car by car my videos. They're sorted out a lot better in YouTube. Go over there and take a look. For right now, let's get these pins done. Finally, found a piece of Brillo pad, if you guys can even see it. And we'll just take this. I don't like using sandpaper on these because it tends to really scratch them. We'll see how this works. See if this is strong enough. They're not going to be perfect, but you don't want them sticking at all. We'll sand that off of there, just like so. There you go. It's kind of cleaned up. I mean, you know, you're not going to get them perfect. It's not that kind of situation. We'll do kind of the same with this, and we're going to open this L260D up. We'll put some on there. It shouldn't evaporate. Lithium grease usually is pretty decent. There we go. Let's see here. Try to 
to make it so I keep it on the box and hang it up on the pegboard so we can actually find it. There we are. We'll just go ahead and squidge some on there. We'll put them back in, tighten them up, and we're pretty much done with that. Okay, if you could even see there, and I have no idea. Uh, so all we done here, we just used a small bleeder. This big guy, a company sent me. I don't have enough fluid to fill it up, so I didn't use it today. Uh, I need to get some more fluid next time I'm out, and I will use that on the next time. And since this is only actually one wheel, it wasn't really worth doing all that today. So I just did this, this little hand bleeder. It puts it all in the cup, and then all you got to do, of course, after the cup is... Everything's bled out. Just take it and pour it right back in. Now, the thing you have to remember is you don't want to fill up your reservoir very full because what's going to happen, you can see it's down a little bit. When I go to the other side and I push that caliper in to put the new pads on, that's going to raise the level. So we'll leave this off. And if you didn't know, on E39, the brake flows under the driver's side cabin air filter. That's where the reservoir is at. Uh, I don't want to get the level too high in it. I think the time I press the other one in, it should be about right. So we'll see. And after it's all done, we need to add some fluid to it. I could top it off doing that. So this side is done. Now our brake pad wear sensor, I had to zip tied it up out of the way. It still worked, it wasn't kicking the light on, I just left the sensor on it, just took it out and zip tied it. It was a little bit broken where it pushes into the brake pads and it wouldn't stay in the old one anymore. So we don't wanna just leave it on there and let it, get, let it get ripped off by the wheel. If you didn't know, I did use a C-clamp to push in the new caliper all the way to get it on with the new pads. Kinda of left that out. This isn't really a DIY how to do it. This is more of a what to watch out for when you're doing it and uh, some brake bleeder shenanigans and stuff like that. Okay, so this other side is kind of rusty and I sprayed some of that, the deoxid with the grease in it around it. You can see it's barely, it's all the way in and it's barely starting to roll over that rubber edge. So that's not good. I mean, it's not like bad or anything, but that situation, the pads on this side were also the same and they definitely don't look like ceramics. You can tell by the material they are and they're covered in dust all around the edges of them. And I can't remember, I know I didn't do these. I remember John did this or the previous owner did this, probably the previous owner. And um, I really don't remember, but now we're gonna fix the pad problem once and for all. Like I said, just press that in there. That's all good. Um, a lot of you guys tell me all the time, oh, you gotta replace the brake disc whenever you do the pads. I don't know whoever told you that. Who, was the dealer telling people that or what? These discs are perfectly fine. It's been sitting there slightly surface rusty. There's no lip on it. They're not, um, what do you call it? They're not wobbly when you hit the brakes. Everything works fine. I just don't want the black wheel dust on her. Now, However, if they were shaking when you hit the brakes, as cheap as they are anymore, I would just go ahead and put new ones on it versus turn the old ones. Uh, I will say that about it. So that's pretty much it on this. Let's go ahead and I guess finish her up here and see what we got. Yeah, so I mean, there you have it. The car is done and finished. Uh, I need to go drive it. It's raining right now outside. But I also need to pull these seats out and do that. So maybe let's go ahead and start with that yet this evening, get that done. Actually drive this thing. Uh, we might have the ECU back next week. I don't know what's going on with that situation. I need to call him to see what the situation with all that is. That's going to be it for the break uh, what not to do video, we'll call it. Something like that. That's going to be it, guys. Thanks for watching, as always. We'll be back very soon with another video.